Welcome to the Scale Model Club and on this week's show... Hello, welcome to the Scale Model Club and on this week's show I will be showing you how to make a desert diorama. Well, I say showing you, this will be the first one I've ever built. So, right, so uh, the first thing you saw there was a picture frame. I picked up really cheap from the range or other cheap shops. Um, take all the glass out, all the pictures out, leave you with the hardboard. Um, I'm going to cover the hardboard in, obviously, as you can see, polyfiller. This gives it a uh, textured surface something for me to uh, to work with and um, polyfill is quite good because you can just stick it on like this and then once you've got it on you can mold it around and move it with a little bit of water wet your fingers a bit of cloth everything like that and it will you can move it around smooth it off I want it a little bit jaggedy and a little bit messy because it's got to look like a desert this isn't usually my forte. I'm, I'm, this, I don't normally do dioramas, but I want to try and get into it because I think all the models look a little bit nicer if they're sat on a on a little display. If I'm honest, that's what I think anyway. So, so I thought after I've done this one, we might try a grass one, a little grass one, just to stick any of the aircraft on that I make uh, to make the model look a little bit nicer speed this up because we don't need to watch me playing with uh, filler thanks everybody for watching uh, thanks for liking and subscribing tell your friends um, hope everyone had a lovely Christmas um, and I hope you all have a good new year So I was just going to put this on, um, get it fairly smooth, then mark out sort of where I wanted the road to go, um, because that, the road needs to be slightly flatter than the rest of it, obviously it needs to look like vehicles have run up and down it. I was going to try and put uh, tracks in it, um, but then I decided not to. But all in all, I was quite pleased with the finish I got with the um, with the poly feather. So you can just wet your finger, and you can just play with the edges, smooth it off, then let this dry overnight. Let it dry. Uh, the next thing I did is I went outside, grabbed a handful of stones, uh, and sprinkled them on when it was wet, just to give them so that they can, well, as the polyfiller dries, they'll stick to it. Um, I'm just going to run over the whole thing with some air so that anything that's not stuck will will just blow off before I start painting it and it blows off while I'm trying to paint it. Always a good idea, gets rid of dust and stuff because obviously it's sat for a while. If I had a rattle can, I would have done it with a rattle can. But I didn't, so oh, get rid of that. I need all of those. So I just covered it all in this deserty colour. This is the light colour from the DAC set I got. So the colour reference is uh, five oh one one six. Oh no, sorry, uh, two oh three two three oh, and that is. Um, yeah, uh, Vallejo paints 230. <coughs> uh, just to give it a sandy base, um, so that I basically paint the, the base colour on, so that if anything doesn't quite work on the top or anything comes off on the top, you still have like a sandy colour on the bottom. Admittedly, it's a bit on the yellowy side, the sand, but it's not bad. Proper job.
I let that dry, let that dry for quite a while. Um, turned, uh, did a few little extra little bits here because it didn't quite cover it all. Um, and then let it dry again. You've got to let these dry really well in between uh, the different stages that you do. So the next stage um, is to get the sand on. So this is PVA glue. I uh, tipped all the PVA glue on the board and then spread it around with a big wide brush. Um, tried to go in between the stones. Um, and it's a wide brush. Tried to go in between the stones, but I wasn't too bothered, if I'm honest. It's not as if they're not going to have a bit of sand on, are they? They're only there for... Um, give it a bit of depth when you look at it, rather than it just being a desert. Uh, when you see a lot of pictures as well, they all seem to be quite stony, the deserts in North Africa. So once you've got the PVA all on there, uh, the next thing I used was a ballast from Woodland Scenics, um, which is a sandy colour. Um, I can't tell you much more than that because I, I bought it years ago. And that's what I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you buy a bag that's about 100 grams and it will last you years. Well, it depends on how big you want to do your dioramas, but this is probably the biggest diorama I've done with the sand. So just sprinkle this all over the board, let it all stick to the uh, PVA and then you let that dry. Um, once that's dried, you just tip it up, tip all the spare sand off and tip the spare sand that you don't use back in your packet. And it's nice because it actually looks like sand. I mean, and to be fair, you could probably go outside and get yourself a handful of sand if you live near a sandy place and just chuck a handful of sand on there. That would look even more like sand. So that's that done. Uh, after I've done that, I then watered down some PVA, put it in a little squirty bottle, like a um, you know, like a glass cleaner bottle, and then squirted it all over it, and then let it dry. Um, you, you, you water it down so it's like a, a skimmed milk, like you paint the airbrush, and then just squirt it all over it. Dries clear, and it dries, and it sticks everything where you put it. Uh, right now, for the road down the middle, um, when you look at a lot of the picture, the um, the roads are a different colour. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd get the base coat colour and just pop that in the airbrush and paint the road on so that you know that's a road and not just sand, basically. Again, gives it a little bit more depth. I used the same as the base coat colour, the 230 from Vallejo. Um, and I actually ran out of paint on this bit, as you can see. So what I ended up doing was put a little bit of thinner into the, or flow improver as it was, into the bottle, shake it up, and then put it on. It didn't matter if it was a little bit too thin because I'm just trying to get a color on there. And as you can see, it looks quite nice. Now what I thought I'd do is if I grabbed myself a slightly darker color, um, put that in the airbrush and then just paint the edges of the road like that just to give it a there you go and it looks like things have been driving up and down the middle of that um, I then thought I'd give a couple of the stones a bit of a brush over with the darker colour Any, just everything to give it a little bit of contrast So the next stage is to put a couple of little bushes. Now, also I bought this years and years ago. This is a, this is also woodland scenic long grass, I think it's called, um, and it's basically like green bits of plastic that are in a 
that are together. Um, you hold them in your fingers, pinch them, cut them. Uh, sorry, this is all a little bit um, unorganised now. So you just cut them with a pair of scissors, you end up with like a bush amount in your fingers. Um, and then you dip it, I dip it in PVA glue and stick it on the board. Only I didn't have enough PVA glue to do that, so I needed to tip that out into my into that little tub there. Only a couple of cotton buds left. Um, so you get a little, so you just dip the the grass in there, um, then stick it on the board. Do it in a couple of places. You can move it about a little bit. It's wet, and then let that go off. Let that go off, so it's really, really well gone off like the day after and then you can cut it with scissors so you can cut it a little bit shorter or you can give it a shape and then once you're happy with the shape and you're happy with how it sits you can spray those with your watered down PVA which then sets them in place um, again I can't honestly remember what that is I bought because it was so long ago but I'm sure it's long grass But it looks pretty good when it's on on the model model base. So the next stage is uh, finishing it off. So you get your picture frame, you pop your bit of cardboard back in your picture frame, you know, move all the tabs across uh, so it holds it steady, and you've got yourself a nice little diorama uh, with a nice little edging. I think that's a nice little touch. The nice thing is you can go and buy smaller pictures or bigger pictures depending on what size of um, diorama you want to display uh, I, I, I just think that this is a nice it's quite a cheap easy way of providing an edge to your diorama without having to paint sand or do any kind of woodwork so now we're back down to the vehicles um, what I need to do to these is uh, matte coat them because I didn't do that before so they've been drying for however long it's taken me to make this diorama uh, I'm going to cover them in a matte coat get rid of the shine off them so they look a bit more desi and then we'll place them on the diorama thanks everybody for watching thank you for liking and subscribing I hope everybody's still quite interested in modeling hope somebody's picked up the hobby Hope everybody has a good new year. Let's hope everything changes next year and we're all able to get out and about and not have to wear a mask. So the last part of the diorama coming up in a couple of weeks time with the Spitfire build. Um, and then setting the Spitfire on the diorama. I honestly have no idea how I'm going to do that yet. Um, and the other thing is the explosion. There is an explosion in the picture. Um, I haven't honestly decided whether to try and make an explosion or I'm not quite sure. I might make one, do a video on it and we can all have a voyage of discovery. Um, but yeah, join me next time when we can watch the Spitfire attack the Africa Corps. And uh, as it is, I think that's quite a nice diorama as is, even if you're not going to add the Spitfire, but I'm quite pleased with that. I'm very pleased with that, actually. Looks nice. So join me next time for Spitfires, explosions, more sand.